Hi, I'm Seben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Piggyback Windings in PWM Converters. There is a paper, there's a reference to the subject matter here, multiple output flyback converters, the role of output capacitor in shaping the currents of secondary windings. Here is the link that you can download the paper and there's also an IEEE Explore link for downloading. I'm going to put the two links as a YouTube page of the video that you are now watching. So what is the subject we are going to discuss in this presentation? We are talking about an auxiliary winding on a main inductor in a PWM converter here shown in the back and also in a flyback, it's a secondary winding. This is a more familiar configuration. This is perhaps less familiar and here we have the inductor of the buck. Here we have the switcher, a diode, and the inductor. And there is another winding on the inductor to provide another power supply, auxiliary power supply, which is isolated, which is kind of very nice. So I'm going to cover in this presentation a basic explanation of the operation of this uh, piggyback winding to discuss a little bit about the role of output capacitors. As it turns out, they have an important effect on the operation. And then to sort of mention what is load regulation and what is affecting cross regulation. So let me start off with the buck configuration. And here I'm showing a inductor, and this is now a coupled inductor. Now a coupled inductor means that we have two or more windings on same gapped core. This is a gapped core because it is an inductor, so it's meant to store energy. However, due to the fact that we do have two windings in this case, it is also acting as a transformer. A transformer, by definition, is a device which does not store energy. It's a transparent to energy, that is energy coming in, is energy coming out. So basically this is a coupled inductor, so it's an inductor with an extra winding and also as we will see it will also operate as a transformer. Now if we have a turn ratio of n to 1 that at any given time the voltage of the secondary is related to the voltage of the primary, first approximation, as n to 1. Here it is. So when the switch is on, we have the voltage coming in and the voltage imposed on the inductor is V in minus V1, V in minus V1, and therefore the voltage at the secondary will be N times this value. Now during the off time, transistor doesn't operate, we have the current locked in this loop here through the diode. If we have a diode, could be a synchronous converter, we'll talk about it later. And the voltage then, in this case, is the output voltage plus the diode voltage. So we have it VL1 plus VD1, and therefore the output is the same uh, value times N. If we will connect the winding such that the dots are here, meaning that when here it's positive, here it's positive respect to the other end. Then during the off time, when we have the voltage equal to V1 plus Vd, we are going to have also here this voltage times n. The reason why I've put it here plus is because the dot is here and here we have the diode. Since we have here the diode and here we have a positive voltage, now we have conduction. So at this stage, this actually acts as a transformer because we have a voltage at the input, which imposing a voltage at the output, and power is coming out. So power is transferred through this transformer from here the uh, primary to the secondary. Now the voltage that we have here, the primary, as we have said, is V1 plus Vd1. The voltage we're going to have here is this voltage minus Vd2. So in the private case that n is 1, and if the voltage drop on the diode is about the same, 
we end up with V2 about equal to V1. So this is very nice. The point is that V1 is regulated because normally we operate this uh, unit in closed loop. So therefore V1 is regulator. So therefore V2 is also regulated following V1 within the limitation that we will talk about. It is important, however, to recognize that this will happen only if the dots are in the correct position. That is, when you have the voltage here equal to v V1 plus uh, the voltage drop of the diode, we, you'll have here positive and the diode conducting. So what about other configuration, other topologies? And let's have a look now at the boost converter. In this case, during the on time, we have on the inductor V in, because we have here a short, I mean, the transistor is conducting, so the voltage is about zero. And during the off time, we have on the inductor V in minus V out, neglecting the voltage drop on the dial. Okay, so during the on, we have V in. During the off, we have V in minus V out. So if we'll take V on minus V off, we're going to get V out. And this we can be done here by having another diode such that when here is plus, plus, so we have V in, we are charging this to V in. And then when the transistor is off, we are going to have here V out minus V in, V out minus V in and we'll be charging this to this value. And now we look over the two voltages and actually we are doing a subtraction here. So therefore we're going to get V out times N if there is a uh, transfer ratio of N between the primary and secondary, N could be of course smaller than one. So we can do it also in the boost converter. Now what about the output capacitors and the importance and the role and the way they operate? It looks trivial, but it is not. As it turns out, there's a lot of action going on during this uh, switching between on and off. So first of all, let me just point out that I'm putting here resistors, not because uh, I'm assuming that uh, the unit is uh, loaded by resistors, but if there is any system that is drawing any current, then you can replace it by an equivalent circuit with a resistor. The value of the resistor will be, of course, the voltage divided by the current. So we have now two capacitors here. And let's see how these interact during the operation. I'm starting off with an equivalent circuit here which is replacing the coupled inductor by an inductor and ideal transformer. Operation is the same. This is now ideal transformer. It is a real transformer, just transferring energy, while the energy is stored in this inductor, okay? And then we label uh, I1 is the current going here, I2 current here, and IL is the actual current through the inductor. Now during the on time, during the on time, the voltage here is V in because the transistor is on. Current is flowing through IL and increasing because V in is larger than the output voltage. I haven't marked it, let's say V1. And therefore the inductor current is going up. Obviously, I1 is following it because there is no connection here. There is no current going to the other part. So basically we do have a conventional, you might say connection of the buck converter during a T on, inductor and a load. I2 is zero. V1, meanwhile, is charging because this is V1 here, because there is current coming in and the inductor current is going up. So therefore the voltage here is going up. And V2 at the same time, is dropping because there's no energy going into V2 and C2 is now loaded by R2 and therefore the voltage of V2 is going down, okay? So this would be during the on time. Now we flip to the 
off time. In this case, the diode is conducting. Okay. What happens here is that now there is an action of transformer between the primary and secondary. So we are in effect connecting this voltage between these two points to here. And being a transformer, and if he, we have a voltage here and a voltage here, then there be a current that will tend to equalize the two voltages. Well, I'm talking about one to one. If it's not one to one, then of course there is a ratio, a winding a turn ratio involved. So at this point, at this point, we're going to see a jump in the current because the voltage V2 is low, voltage of V1 is high. So therefore it's going to be a current going between the C1 and C2, in fact, charging, we might say from C1, charging C2, here it is. So we see a jump in I1 in this direction, a jump in I2 in this direction. At the same time, V1 will drop a little bit and V2 will go up a little bit. This will happen when the coupling coefficient is close to one. I'll talk about it later on. So this is the behavior we're going to see during the very first instant after the transition from on to off. Later on, things are behaving as usual. We have the current locked here through the inductor. Inductor current is going down. Therefore, I1 is also going down. V2 is following V1, so the voltage is going down. The current of I2 is also going down, following I1, depending, of course, on the load. So this is now, again, the regular operation. What is not regular, what is kind of unique here, is the jump here, due to the fact that there is a effect of equalization between the voltage here and the voltage here due to the transformer action. So let's have a look at it in, in by simulation. I have done simulation here. This is now representing the switching part. This is just a, a pulse source, voltage pulse, uh, with a duty cycle of uh, 0.5, that's a 5 microsecond on, 10 duration, the period. Coupling coefficient here is 1, 100 microhenry, the two inductors, which are coupled by this uh, directive. We have a um, short key diode, output capacitor 1 microfarad here, 1 microfarad here. This side is loaded more than this side. It's a 1 to 1, of course. And since the duty cycle is uh, 0.5 and the input is 10 volt, then we would expect to have about 5 volt here and about uh, five volt here. So let's see what we are getting. This is now the excitation. This is the pulse, the input. Okay, that's the voltage here. And here are the currents of the primary. This is the primary here. This is the current through here. So as we have said, we have a current going this direction. There's a sharp pulse here. We have a current here which is now charging this, cap this capacitor here, uh, C C2. And as you can see here, it is charged. While here, this capacitor, this is the output uh, V1, is actually discharged. Okay, this is discharged. So these are now being sort of about equal to within, of course, the uh, circuit. And this is pretty much what I've discussed earlier. We can see it in action here by simulation. Now, if the coupling coefficient is 0 0.99, so that is, we have about 1% leakage inductance, situation is a little bit different because then we have inductors here in series, which is the leakage inductors. So therefore you wouldn't expect a very sharp current pulse which is attenuated, you might say, by the inductance. And indeed, this is what we see. We see now that the currents are now, like say the current of D1 here, is uh, shaped a little bit here. Uh, in fact, there is sort of a resonance between um, uh, the capacitor and the leakage inductor. And by the way, I had to put here 
a snubber because otherwise we got some very high frequency oscillation so I put a snubber which doesn't affect too much the operation uh, just damped the parasitic oscillation and of course here the waveform are more smooth due to the fact that the current does not have uh, spikes to it now if I change the capacitor from one microfarad two capacitor to 10 microfarad things are actually calming down because this one microfarad we have a higher frequency of resonance here it's going down it's a lower frequency we just catch it here halfway and of course here we get a smooth waveform now the output again is about 5 volt as you can see and as expected being a buck converter while the output of the secondary is 0.7 uh, this is a shot key dial, the current is not very high, so uh, it's kind of expected. We don't have a diode at the primary here, so therefore we don't have this compensation effect, and uh, therefore we are losing some of the voltage due to the voltage drop uh, on the diode. This is about the same thing here. Let me talk a little bit about loading effect. First of all, and that is what happens if we load the secondary. As in any practical circuit, the circuit has, you might say, an internal resistance, an output resistance. And this is due to the fact that when current is passing here, there are voltage drop on the parasitic element, on the leakages, on the resist resistive part, both in the primary and secondary. So once you load it, these elements cause voltage drops, which is reducing the output. So you would expect that when loading this secondary, which is unregulated, I'm talking about the situation that this one is regulated, okay? There is a feedback, so if there is a change, it will be corrected. But here, nothing can correct it. So therefore, the larger the, these elements, the resistance and the leakage inductances, the larger will be the drop when you load the secondary. And then there is a concept of cross-regulation. By cross-regulation, we mean the following. Suppose you have a system like that, and you change the load of the regulated part, of this part, okay? That is, for example, you reduce the value of this resistance, you increase the current. What happens? Well, as it turns out, when you do that, in a circuit like that, due to the so-called cross-regulation effect, the voltage here would change and in fact will increase. That is, you load here and the voltage here increases. Why is that? It is because loading of the primary side of the main converter which is regulated loading it will cause a higher current if you have a higher current here the voltage here will increase if the volt because you need a higher voltage to induce the current due to the voltage drops of the resistance and the leakages once this voltage increases, this voltage increases, and you see an increase in the output. So cross-regulation, again, will be dependent on the parasitic element. The larger uh, the value of the resistance and leakage inductance, the more you'll have a poor uh, cross-regulation, as it is called. So let me summarize this uh, short presentation, which is kind of a primer to the subject. As follows, the piggyback windings are effective and economical way to get extra isolated power supply. The dial drop of the secondary can be compensated by a voltage of the diode on the primary side. Better coupling and low wire resistance will improve loading control and cross-regulation, but high coupling coefficient will cause higher circulating current. These are these spikes that I have mentioned. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest. Thank you very much.